Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Painting in Place. I'm Scott, and today, well, we get to work on the Dark Elf uh, Queen or Drow Empress, depending on which way you want to look at it. Um, I typically like to say the, the Drow Empress. I hope you all are having a wonderful start to your weekend. Let's see. Wow, we've already got a lot of people in the, in the chat. I'm going to have to scroll back up for this. Uh, Fire Granite, great to see you. Uh, let's see. Zagmeister, good to see you as well. Benjamin, as always, hello, hello. Uh, Lazy Gothy, hello. How are you? Hey, Dave, good to see you too. Man, we got a full house today. And of course, Crom the Crusher, ready to crush the chat. Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> ah, man, oh, it's good to be back. Let's see here. I believe, I don't think we really have any announcements to make. Uh, we have a new uh, episode up of the Bestiary this morning. If you haven't checked that out, you can head on over to our YouTube channel. I believe they just finished up Devils. Did they finish it? I don't know. They're Devil's Part 3, where we get to talk about pit fiends, which is oh so fun. Maybe I'll paint one of those one day. Uh, oh, thank you for putting that, that up in the chat. Uh, all right. I think that is enough from me. Let's go ahead and get to what we are all here for. So last week, we finished this wonderful throne. But, uh, you know, the throne has to come with someone to sit atop it, and we have our Drow Empress who is ready for her rightful place. Um, we have already primed her with Army Painter's Uniform, uniform Gray Spray Primer. Whew, that is a uh, fun to, to get out. And uh, yeah, what I love about this primer is it dries really quick. She is already ready to go. I've got a lot of paints out, and I also have a, um, a reference model. So I've painted one drow before, but um, it's been a while. Um, I've worked on this one here. Let's, uh, let's get our lights set up again. Loop. Loop. There we go. So I have this, uh, this drow here that I have done in the past. It's going to be kind of hard to see all of these high details here. Uh, and I'm kind of thinking of trying to paint this one to be similar. Obviously, these aren't the same model. Uh, they're not the same sculpt. But I do think that this uh, would be a good mini to maybe replace this one with if she were to pop up onto the table. Hey, Dragon Mage 28 good to see you. Um, hope you're having a great start of the week. Now, before we get started started, I actually have a fun cautionary tale. Uh, so I've got my uh, brush here ready to go, and you may note that I've got some uh, some discoloration here. I I made a mistake. I made a I made a big mistake, a huge error on my part. After our last miniature uh, Monday, I could have sworn I cleaned this. Uh, I turns out I was wrong. <laughs> so this sat. Um, Man, for the better part of the week, just with, uh, caked in some uh, dark, uh, some non oil wash, as well as um, just black paint. Um, and by the end of it, I, I noticed this yesterday morning, um, and the the tip here was just rock solid. Uh, it was not going to be doing any painting anytime soon. And this here, this this Raphael uh, Kalinsky brush is um, this is my workhorse. This is what I get most of the uh, the painting done with. Um, so I definitely had a, a nerve wracking moment, and we're actually uh, so I, I had a um, a multi part restoration solution. Uh, start step one was to rinse this under warm water and uh, get as much of the paint. Know, loose as possible. Step two, um, I've got this wonderful product here, which is uh, pink soap, and this is a this is a great cleaning product uh, for for brushes. And um, so I, under the warm wa water, I massaged this into the brush, and it still wasn't really doing much. But what I did is I've actually uh, I've got this vial here. And what I did was I filled this vial. Um, pretty much all the way full with pink soap. And then using gravity and a bunch of sticky tack, I was actually able to then just have the brush sit and rest in there. And it pretty much, uh, pretty much just stayed in there all night. So this morning I, uh, I got up, 
and did some work on it, and, and that was gonna, gonna be the, the moment of truth. I've had to restore a couple of brushes before, but the, most of them were brushes that I didn't really do all that much detail work with. This was the first time that I've had to do it on, on this one. Um, and that was good. That did um, that did a good number on it. I was able to, uh, the bristles were loosened up again. I was able to work out most of that paint, and then I used uh, this here, which I think Dave, you uh, you brought up this um, uh, the Master's Brush Cleaner, and this is again another very great cleaning product that you're able to just um, get your brush nice and wet, and work it through here and really work up a lather, and I was able to work that lather into the brush, and what you end with is actually getting the brush nice and wet and rolling it through there, bringing your, your brush to a nice point, and then you let some of this stay on it, almost like a conditioner. So, as of this morning, I believe this brush is alive. Uh, we'll find out, and we'll see if it's up to the task of getting some of this finer detail work done. So, just a nice reminder for, for everyone, triple check to make sure you clean your brushes. <laughs> uh, it's got to happen to you before, you know, you, 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 you have to mess up so that you can learn from it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this, uh, this dark elf, this, this drow. Uh, with this primer, I've gone ahead and you know what, even as I'm looking at this mini, I'm probably going to have to come up with even yet another miniature to paint for this because uh, this one doesn't have the, the robe underneath. So that's gonna be a problem. I think this is actually the first time I've painted um, a character like this. Most of the time I'm painting monsters. This may be the first time I've painted a humanoid. So the first thing that we really, really need to do is make sure we know exactly the, the details that we have in front of us. Uh, it actually looks as though I've got a little bit of cleanup that I need to do that uh, along the edge here. You can see a little bit of mold line, um, which is fine. It's it's totally okay to go back over this uh, even after the primer's been put on to take some of this mold line away. Yeah. How has everyone's weekend been so far? Is it off to a good start? Oh, and that's what I'm missing. Music. Haha. <laughs> I've got a button for that. There we go. Uh, let's see. Ben, you use this on your oil paints. Very nice. Um, yeah, it's a very versatile... Well, and by this, I mean the, the master brush cleaner. It's a very versatile uh, tool, I think. And by versatile, I mean it's, it's very good at doing what it's made for. That's not what versatile is. It's a very specific thing. Um, looking forward to streaming again tonight. That's right, Dave. You've got another uh, stream happening tonight, which uh, you best believe I'm going to be there for that. We had another uh, very successful round of the gauntlet last night that ended not with a party death, which is always a, a good way to end a gauntlet. Um, they got pretty far. They got pretty far. Krom, I know you're in the audience here. Um, so, you know, congratulations on you all never having to faint, faint, face <laughs> the, uh, the Bloodhawks again. I'm pretty sure you guys will be happy about that turnout. Um, <laughs> Do you have the tier twos? Wow. Yeah. So some of you may notice we have some uh, some emotes going on in the chat. We now officially have uh, two emotes. We've got the um, uh, the animated shrub with its hilarious googly eyes, uh, and it looks like Zagmeister there has the deer mon or you know the demon deer, which put up quite a fight in the the early episodes of the Gauntlet. Uh, <laughs> it's awesome. 
Yep, no more Bloodhawks. Oh, uh, Shady Scott, great to see you as well. I, I'm sure I, I saw your name, but I neglected to actually say anything. Um, yeah, that was a lot of adrenaline surges you guys had last night. Oh, and Dave, catching up on the gauntlet. Um, so a new episode of the gauntlet, or a new, a uh, an, another uploaded episode of the gauntlet is going to be going up today. Um, we're trying to get those out kind of the, the week after so that people who aren't able to really watch them on Twitch are still able to do so on YouTube. So episode three will be coming on to our YouTube channel today. Uh, Fire Garnet, Snake, sorry I missed the gauntlet. Uh, bed down with a migraine, but uh, Lazy Gothy told me it was great. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that you're having a migraine. Um, I will be sure to not do any loud yelling. <laughs> okay, we've cleaned up the mold lines, and I believe we are good to start. First things first, whenever we paint a mini of, a, of an actual character, well, actually, really with any mini, we want to start in a particular order. And the order that I was always taught was um, paint in the order that you're going to get dressed. So we actually start with skin tones. And I went out and I picked up some colors specifically in uh, with painting a drow in mind. And the first thing we're going to grab is uh, Vallejo's Royal Purple. Now, some of you may think, hey, this Vallejo looks very different than the uh, the Vallejos that I'm used to you seeing, Scott. Uh, that's true. And that's because my, uh, my local game store switched over. You can see we have model color and game color. Um, really, it's just a, a different category within the same brand. Game color is made specifically for more tabletop minis for games like like D&D, Warhammer, things like that. Whereas model color is specifically for intense, not intense, model makers um, and people who want to be incredibly accurate. So you would actually even note I've got a um, I've got a German gray here, and I've got a black gray, and these are pretty much the same color. Uh, the only difference is there's a very, very slight difference in the variation of the German gray because this was the German, uh, this was the gray that the Germans used on their uniforms. So there's so many color variations in the model paint by Vallejo, so that people can be as accurate as possible. With game colors, we don't need to be that accurate, so they were able to pare down a bunch of those colors. So we've got. Royal Purple by Vallejo, and I believe this is going to be our Drow Empress's skin tone. Yeah, I'm gonna get myself some clean water um, and get to work. German Grey, one of my favorites. It's an excellent color. I definitely enjoy using it. And so far, the brush seems to be doing well. Now there are some details in here on the face that I'm actually having kind of a difficult time picking them out from other things. So I'm gonna get my main pass on the skin tone or on the skin colors done here. You know, let me see if I can't get this camera focused a little bit better here. All right, we're gonna try this. Um, the camera might get a little funky. I'm, I'm turning on the autofocus 
as well as um, an auto balance so that we can hopefully get everyone seeing more detail on what I'm doing. I try as often as possible to stay away from uh, painting these more detailed miniatures, um, mostly because they're so small, they're really hard to, uh, uh, to have show up on the cameras that we use here at the tavern. However, this is one of those that we really can't avoid because it came with the throne. All right, so now that I've got that first base done on the face, uh, I'm going to use some uh, some jeweler's loops, actually. Um, so these are kind of magnifying glasses that you uh, you hold up to your eye. You know, if you've ever seen the the appraiser in, in a in a film, you're like, ah, oh, yes, I believe this is worth ah, this much. Uh, these are actually fantastic. They they help you find a lot of details in what you're working on. Um, what I'm using right now is um, it's about ten times magnification. Uh, and it really lets me see what I might be missing. And I'm seeing that I'm missing a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit on the hairline as well as on uh, the cheekbone there. So I'm just gonna get a little bit more and really get in there. There's another version of those uh, those magnifiers that you can use where um, you just wear them. They're like glasses. Um, but I typically find that I don't need to have them on all the time. Uh, Lazy Gothy, that is awesome. Yeah, they are very handy. I've got them from, let's see, what are my magnifications? Uh, from two times, let's see, we got a two, we got a three, we got a five, then jumps to seven, and then ten. And I typically find for small minis like this, ten is really what we're going for. All right, and that, I think, is already the face done. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit in there in the neck. You can see that's, um, that's, that's pretty purple right there to start with. Um, yeah. And that might look a little strange, especially when compared to our other uh, drow right here. But what's really going to help with that color is both tones, uh, like putting a wash on, as well as uh, highlighting. We're actually going to end up highlighting the skin using a gray, and that's going to—that's really going to sell the the skin tone there. So now we kind of have to decide what we're going to do. Uh, what else is going to be skin tone? Um, she's got, um, you know, her crossed legs here, which we could have those be bare legs. Um, but to be perfectly honest, I, I, I'm never a fan of that, like, that fantasy trope of, you know, let's have our, our female characters wearing as little armor as possible. So I would, I think I'd much rather have her legs be wearing, um, like some sort of uh, like stockings or, or leggings. She's got armor on her main body, um, but I think that like her between her boots and her her uh, her armor, she could be wearing something in there. But there is a little bit of um, uh, area here between her uh, full gauntlet and her armor sleeve, and I do kind of like the idea of maybe a little bit of her arm. Um, peeking out from there. That could be interesting. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that and see see what we think of, about that. <laughs> Leave the skimpy wardrobe to Krom. Yeah, Krom doesn't really wear much, does he?
Why would Krom dev deprive his fans of the sight of his glorious muscles? That is true, Krom. That is true. Ah, I'm seeing some mold lines there under the arm that are actually causing me some problems. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Um, Lazy Gothy, this is a beautiful color. Yeah, this is, um, this purple is coming out very nice. And again, this is, uh, this is royal purple from, uh, Vallejo. Now this model, we're going to be seeing more mold lines than normal on this one. Because this model came out, uh, it was part of Reaper's Kickstarter. Oh. Which, you know, they, they released models, the, the released models from the Kickstarter are still somewhat in a work in progress. Um, they, um... They still change some things for when it goes into a more mass production. And so this was one that came from the Kickstarter, not from the current uh, Dark Elf uh, Queen on Throne that you can get from Reaper. Um, which the molds look the same. The only difference is that this one has more mold lines. And I wonder, you might it might actually come with her attached to the throne. I don't know if that was a... If that's a part of the main mold or not. Oh, there's some mold lines under there. My goodness, I'm apparently I'm not great at uh, um, cleaning up. There we go. You'll also notice that she's wiggling on this base quite a bit. Um, and that's mostly for me. I've got, or because of me, I've got a little bit of sticky tack that she's sitting on, but I wanted to have as much of the base open for her to uh, be on because, well, I gotta have access to um, this area for painting. Now, not necessarily the entire underside, um, but where the, uh, the robes are going to meet the throne. Now, I don't want there to be a definite line of, ah, that's where this model ends. So let's go ahead, I'm going to reinforce this tack slightly. Let's try this. Um. That should be good. <laughs> Grom, by the way, Scott might be borrowing that royal purple when I finally get around to painting Nox. Uh, absolutely, you are welcome to it. I do like that there's this little bit of her arm sticking through. See, we're already getting a lot of use out of that animated shrub. <laughs> All right. I like that. Now, I think there is one more place that we are going to uh, use the skin tone. And uh, I believe we are going to do that on the, uh, the bust of her armor. And... Mostly because I think the way the armor is designed, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't know. I, I, I feel as though this is an empress. She is confident in her body. She's not going to do the full, um, you know, the, the trope that I'm very happy that we're moving away from of 
the the scantily clad ladies, but she's also confident enough to have this on her armor. Also, I just I want to get some more skin tone on there. It looks really nice. It's okay. Uh, really is the perfect emote. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to make sure that the emote, emote was something that both, um, you know, it had to deal with the uh, Adventures Pack. It had a... It was tied into our lore, but then at the same time was something that you could actively use. And I do think that that, like, oh, what, what's going on? Um, is uh, is really great. And also, thank you, uh, thank you to Ben. Ben is actually the, the one who uh, drew that. Okay, there we go. I think that's going to do it for her skin tone. Oh, it even looks good when you clean it off. <laughs> Googly eyes make everything better. They really do. I saw a great video today of someone at a, um, an aquarium who went around and... I think they worked there, so it was okay. But they, uh, they taped googly eyes to a picture of a turtle... And like massive googly eyes, and it was it was hilarious. Uh, okay, so we've done the uh, we've done the skin tone. Now we're gonna work our way up. So the next thing that did, you would normally do is you would wear, uh, you know, undershirts, undergarments. Um, oh, actually, let's do um, let's do hair. hair. Hair would be you know the next thing. <laughs> it's, it's not your skin, but it's uh, moving up. So for the hair, I think we're going to do. I want to say like an off-white. Um, oh shoot! I have the perfect color, and do I? I'm not used to keeping it. Oh no, here it is. Uh, no, never mind. That's not the perfect color. Wraithbone. Which are you already? I haven't even opened you. How are you drying out yet? Um. All right. So we want like a light gray to a light silver. Silk. So Silver gray. Yep, that'll do it. <laughs> Dry as a wraith bone. Yeah, no, wraith bone's a lovely color, actually. Here, let me show this to you. Um, this is a great color uh, for some some bone work. Um, yeah, no, that's a good one. It's in a, a citadel pot, which I'm I'm not the biggest fan of citadel's way of storing paints. I'm a much bigger fan of the, the eyedroppers. But you know, sometimes. Citadel has a paint that I really need. So I have to I have to deal with that. And there's a lot of emotes coming out here now. Alright, so let's bring this out to the side. That is well shaken up. We're gonna need a little bit of clean water to water that down. Wow, there's a lot of air bubbles in there. Let's Well, it is what it is. All right, let's see what this looks like. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like that. Oh, 
Wraithbone is your go-to light primer. Oh, nice. Yeah, I really should start experimenting more with primers. As I was out and about, I actually found some, uh, um, some brush-on primers, and I do have an airbrush that I want to do more work with. So I really thought to myself, you know, maybe I, instead of using a rattle can for my primers, I could use my airbrush. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, that would cut down on the amount of chemicals that I'm pumping into the air, which is important, you know? That's a, that's a, a great thing. Um, two, it would actually use less paint. Um, if I had an airbrush, I would totally use B Vallejo Black Brush Primer. Yeah, you know, I... These days, maybe I should just do an, an an airbrush thing. Although I have had some people ask me, "Hey, what's what's the next thing that you're gonna paint?" Um, which like, don't get ahead of yourselves. We only just started this drow. <laughs> but I do think the next thing is going to be big, like gargantuan sized, big. Um. And so that would be a perfect time for me to break out the airbrush and, and do some things there. I'm ha actually finding it kind of hard to tell where she, uh, her crown meets her hair. There's her cloak, which I already know the color I want to do on the cloak, and it's going to be great. It's actually the same color we used on the, the tabard, so she's going to kind of blend in uh, with her throne a little bit. I think that's it. I think that's it. All right, and this is where it's going to get a little tricky, where we got to get her hair, which is really close to her face. not going away. I uh, do not know. Ah, no! Paint on her face! Paint on her face! That's not good. Ooh, also, sorry, Bironi. I said I wouldn't be loud. Well, that wasn't too loud. It's probably a good thing that uh, you missed the gauntlet last night. I voiced some kobolds, and they were they were very loud. Although it wasn't a shrieker again, which phew, grateful I don't have to. I'm grateful you guys moved past the shrieker, so I don't have to make that sound again. Ugh. Zagmeister, the screech heard around the world. Oh gosh. Because I try and do a, a good job of um, getting the the mic leveled. Um, so that, you know, everything sounds good. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a better job of anytime something loud shows up, I'm gonna try and move farther away from the microphone, you know, like, like a good voice performer. Um, but you know, I'll say sometimes in the heat of the moment, I just forget. I really do. Also... <laughs> <laughs> I was describing to someone today um, 
they were like, oh, how'd it go last night? And I, I was describing my setup. And something that I don't think people realize is when the gauntlet's happening, I have four monitors um, in this room that are on, and there is stuff active on all of them. Um, so, you know, like, running a game, be being, a, being a GM for a game, um, and then also running tech for the show and then you know running i mean that just in and of itself that's that's more than enough <laughs> Eventually, we'll have enough room and enough space that we can actually have a tech person in the room. Eventually, people will be able to be in the same room again. So that'd be nice. Alright, have I missed anything on the hair? Oh man, that actually hurt my eyes a little bit. Benjamin, ooh, I am raking in all these sweet, sweet inspiration points right now. Can't wait for Friday. Oh, no. I, that's going to be more more chaos wheels in the making, huh? <laughs> Bladro, I've been here for the whole stream. Haven't gotten any. Really, Bladro? Um. Huh. What, uh... If you go down, um... Every now and again, a blue box should show up, and if you click that box, that should get you some more. Um, that's weird, though. I will say, like, the, the whole... Um, oh, yeah, you, you do have to be following the channel, don't you? Um, I don't know if that's what it is or not. Here's the other thing. I know that lately Twitch has been running into some issues. Um, tech stuff gets weird. And um, it could, there could just be like an error on their part. Uh, I have um, zero control on the giving uh, of the of the points. It's, it's purely just a you get points for watching a channel, and uh, the only control that I have here is what you can redeem them for, and how much it costs to redeem. So, sorry if you're not getting any. I, I hope that Twitch fixes whatever's going on. Okay. I think that is a nice start so far. So, let's leave that for now. We're going to get all of our base layers done, um, and then do touch-ups. And then, um, keep working our way up. So, we've done the hair, we've done the face. Next would be time to do, like, undershirts and pants. So I think this is going to be the leggings. I'm tempted to make the leggings, like, huh. A dark earthy green and it's similar to this one hmm <laughs> what uh what do we think what what should we do for the um what should we do for the leggings uh, I'm thinking that the armor is gonna be fairly dark so I don't want to go like black on that um, but we could try and do a purple for the armor um 
how drow are fans of greens and reds and purples uh chrome subscribers also get a multiplier uh to inspiration gains that is true uh, if you are subscribed you get more inspiration points and also if you take part in things like raids um and i think if you donate bits you get points for that too if you gift subs there's there's a lot of things you can do to to get inspiration points um golden yellow huh golden yellow for the golden yellow for the legs maybe i don't know if that would be too bright for a for a drow they, they're not the they're not the brightest of folks well, let's see we've got some we've got some golden yellows here let's what are you canary yellow well, that's a pretty bright hmm i think i'm gonna i'm gonna try like a dark dark green i think um Let's do this military green and see what happens. Uh, -bum. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that, Crom. I uh, took me a little bit to to get in uh, to the raid itself because I had a uh, some quick cleanup stuff to do. Might be for the edge of things. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, let's try this. Let's let's see what happens. What other dark greens do I have that are an option? Angel green. Ooh, that's not bad. Green skin. Nah, it's not really a right color there. Emerald. Nah, we've already used that on her throne. I think it's between this angel green and this military green. And I'm kind of leaning towards the angel green, which we'll be able to... Um, we'll be able to use to... Uh, washes there to, to darken it down. Later, oh, been at 600 the whole, whole stream. That is so weird. I don't know. Sorry, I, I'm, I honestly have no idea why that's going on. See, this, this is what happens. We, we become, we become Twitch affiliates and just like that, they start messing things up for our fans. Come on, guys. Twitch, come on. It's all good either way. Uh, you enjoy the streams, but also want to help out on Fridays. Well, thank you. Thank you for that, Bladro. I surely do appreciate that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. She's got a hefty scar on one leg. That is something that I missed that I 100% should have filled with um, um, green stuff. Oh, gosh. Um, sorry, I might actually... I could take this time to actually fill that with liquid green stuff. Hey, refreshing worked. Oh, good, 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 good. You're at a thousand. Oh no! <laughs> I mean, oh good. <laughs> it's just, oh man, that is. I, I, the chaos wheel may be one of my favorite things that I've added into, uh, uh, into the gauntlet, and I, I, I have that that initial reaction, which is like, oh no, people are people are getting it. What's that gonna do? What's that gonna do? I do like what this green is doing. I think that's um, it, it's a nice touch to it. Um, 
second chaos wheel right on uh here for, yeah no that longevity was amazing last night um maybe she has a tear in her stockings you know what uh yeah that would let's be honest that is a hundred percent what has happened um i think to the best of my knowledge stockings can maybe go uh, a week before they get a run in them so that makes perfect sense mm, no that's that's really bad though so i am gonna take a second to grab some of that liquid green stuff and put it in there uh now to do this i actually am gonna need to grab one of my beater brushes <laughs> Here I was thinking, I don't need to grab beater brushes. I'm just going to be working on um, on the drow tonight. I just need fine detail. I don't need something that doesn't matter. Nope, going to need it. So hold on, let me grab that really quick. There we go. There we go. The brush that, you know, I still clean my beater brushes, but boy, howdy, they, I, getting a bunch of brushes for like 10 cents, it uh, works out great. It enabled Chrom to crush some more. Yep. Felt like a true barbarian with the damage reduction with rage plus the longevity. Yeah, Chrom, you were absolute beast uh on the gauntlet yesterday so well done although lilith had quite a few uh i mean as you put it that you put some uh <laughs> you put some of the the barbarians criticals to shame oh well, hello mr awesome um uh, thank you so much for joining us i am currently painting a uh, a drow empress so all last week well actually all last month really we uh, we painted up her throne and so now we are, uh, we're getting the, the, a place for her to, we've got the place for her to sit, now we're getting the person done themselves. Um, so I'm hoping we can get this done. I mean, I could see this happening in the course of a couple episodes. Um, I am... Very exciting. Actually, this is a good time for me to bring this up to all of uh, all of you who have been watching me for a while. Um, that now with Miniature Monday officially moving over here, which I'm very excited about, uh, I'm not going to be painting two different minis. So... Um, We will be painting this Dark Elf Empress on Mondays and Saturdays. Um, obviously, all the episodes will be um, recorded and uploaded, and just like that, the cut in her leg is fixed, so I'm just going to let that dry. Luckily, uh, Liquid Green Stuff doesn't have that 24-hour drying period. Um, it has a uh, much more like a 10-minute dry period, which is very handy uh oh it's uh fury hello hello mr awesome are you one of uh are you one of uh right hand ravens uh ravens <laughs> oh hey crom thank you for that I'm just gifting subs left and right <laughs> um actually while uh while subs are being gifted out uh now is a a good time for me to remind everyone that if you're watching and you're currently not following our channel, please go ahead and if you're enjoying this, hit that follow button. It's actually really going to help out our Friday after our Friday evening shows, the Gauntlet that we keep talking about here. That um, yeah, once we hit 75 followers, there's actually going to be a big, big boost for them. So thank you for that, and also thank you for joining us if if you're new here. And if none of you are new here, hey, what's up? Good to see you all. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, so we're gonna have to let that dry a little bit, but I really like the, the green. I like how that turned out. <sighs> Boy, I could really use a much better detailed camera on this. Come on. Come on. You're really gonna... Really gonna do that? You can you can do it. I believe in you. Oh, for the love of Pete. Nope. Alright, I tried. <laughs> ah, man. Yeah, we're only like three or four away from 75. It's amazing. Yeah, you guys are about to unlock another sanctuary. And then it'll be a very long road until the next one. <laughs> um, okay. So with that done, and us waiting for that liquid green stuff to dry, it's time to move on to her armor. What's the next milestone after 75? I, you know what, Krom, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to wait until you hit 75 to find that out. Just remember your first, um, Sanctuary unlock was at 25. So. Might be a bit. Okay, I know Drow really like purple, but I like the idea of this Drow having some darker armor. Although we do want her to stand. I gotta take into consideration uh, the throne. We don't want her to blend into the throne. Ugh. Purple armor, or like a. I don't know if we can do like black armor because, well, what are you? Sticks purple. That's yeah, a pretty, pretty tough color. Ay, ay, ay. I expect Chrome to do math. <laughs> right, let's let's get some of this sticks purple out and see what it looks like. Because again, I also don't want it to be too close to her skin tone. Hmm. Well, that's not close at all to her skin tone, but I also just don't like the color. It looks like almost brown. No, 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 no. This is the hardest part for me. Deciding on pigments, deciding on colors. Uh, they wouldn't really have blue. Um, I don't, yeah, they wouldn't have blue armor. I think we're going to go with like a dark gray. I think we're going to go. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? Hello. Dark sea green, black gray, necromancer cloak. Yeah, that one probably wouldn't be too good. It also gets very, um, hmm. What about some of the new colors that we picked up? Uh, we've got runic purple. That's pretty bright. Maybe? <laughs> the, re the rest of the episode is just going to be me going, oh gosh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see what this runic purple looks like. Chrome hates math. All right, adding. Ah, uh, Mix black with something like gunmetal so it still has a sheen. Oh yeah, no, I'm not going to be putting uh, metallics on this wet palette. <laughs> um, these days, I actually, rather than metallic metallics, I tend to do, I, I tend to paint purely non-metallic metals. Um, you know, I'm going to put a little bit of this runic purple on, see if I like it, and if I don't, I can paint over it. It's this wonderful ability that we have. I can't do that too much, because if I do that too much, well, I lose details. Hmm. <laughs> 
It's not a bad color, but it's not a great color. What if I mix that with the sticks purple? Now there, there we've got something. Did we do that on this? Oh, we did. And you know what? I kind of like that as well. Yep. All right, so what we're gonna do with this gauntlet is we're gonna leave her hands free. Um, we're actually gonna go back over and repaint her hands with skin tone. Yeah, I, I like where this is going. Um, <laughs> ah, Crom. Yeah, that's looking pretty, pretty regal. Oh my gosh, when did that happen? I got a lot on her leg. <laughs> I totally forgot to turn off the, uh, the notifications on Discord, so... Yeah, that'll be popping up a lot. Also, for any of you watching who are not currently part of our Discord, uh, we have an AP, uh, an official AP Discord where you can come hang out, um, talk shop. It's a lot of fun. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> all right, so that was the runic purple mixed with the... Um, um, wait, why am I putting more of that down? Runic purple mixed with the sticks purple. And that's giving us a pretty nice color. Again, I typically don't mix paints. Um, it's one of those things that I just really hate remixing it. Um, but, you know. I'll make an exception here.
And actually, the more I'm doing this, I wonder if just the sticks purple is all that kind of came through. Guys, settle down in the Discord, please. I can't get up and silence it. <laughs> I mean, I, I can. It's, it's right there. <laughs> some of that. story that I was going to share with everyone today, and I have 100% forgotten it. It had something to do with painting. I forgot to clean my brush, and that was almost a nightmare. What else? Thank you, Shady. Shady Scott. Carrie. I, I know who you are. Um, yeah, the armor definitely has a, a, some nice Skeletor energy going about it. And um, if my camera would actually focus on the nice small details, uh, there's a lot of nice ribbing in there, which we're going to get some amazing uh, highlighting work once we get to uh, the highlighting of the armor. Um... Yeah, one of the other reasons why I, I tend to steer away from um, the metallic paints with uh, with glitter is that I, I just find that the moment that I use the uh, the metallic, that, that had better be the last step that I take. Because after that, my brush is going to have glitter in it for my rest the rest of my painting session. Both the glitter, the water, I typically will give myself um, a metallics only um, water reservoir. Um, although it's it's inevitable that I or someone that I might be painting with um, ends up mixing those up and then, well, there's that. Yeah, so for all that, that those are the, all the reasons why I'm just like, yeah, I'll just I'll just do non-metallic metals. But having said all of that, I'm not I don't want to shut myself off from an entire um, technique or tool. You know, 
you don't want to be a um, a carpenter and you're like, all right, I'm gonna use all of this, but I've never liked planing my wood, so we're we're not gonna use planers. I don't I don't like that at all. Like, well, shoot, that's a pretty important thing right there that you just said you're not gonna use because you don't like it. Anyway, silly analogy to say that I'm I'm not totally opposed to to uh, metallics. That's just kind of where I am right now. Um, it's not like it ruins it, but yeah, it adds uh, care. Metallics does help. Vallejo Air Metallics are really good. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, because they use a super fine aluminum powder that doesn't jam things up as much. That, that's it. Uh, good to know, actually. Just talking earlier about how I want to bust out the old airbrush. they formulated for airbrush which obviously you don't want to jam it. yeah no i have oh. i uh i need also also i need to do some more work on my airbrushing skills last time i did it um brb folks need to pick up my chipotle order Ooh, chipotle heck yes No. Uh, enjoy getting your food. We'll see you here in a sec. Okay. really difficult area here is in her hair and neckline because um, there are some very minor details of the armor that we want to get the armor but we don't want to get her skin now, obviously we can go back over and you know do touch-ups which we are 100% going to have to do miss playing D&D. &D. My poor dice just, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm guessing collecting dust. Uh, you know, is it, um, is it because you haven't had time? Have you not, uh, or have you not been able to find a good group? Uh, what's, uh, what, what's been the problem? I want to be clear. I'm not. I'm not trying to be like, trying to be like. Oh, what's well, your problem? But like, no. So in, in all seriousness, like, why? Why haven't you been able to? It's. It's. Maybe it's a problem we can fix. Uh, had a group, but I moved to a different town. Ah, that that will do it. I um played uh, pretty much daily for three years uh, in high school, and then I moved. I keep getting it all over her leg, uh, and then I moved to. Uh, well, I mean, I, I I moved out for college, and. And then it became very irregular, if ever. So I uh, I understand the pain. Have you um? Uh, 
I don't know, have you tried finding like local communities, um, like local gaming stores and just like, hey, looking looking for a group. When I when I first moved out here to LA, I had no community whatsoever. Cause I was I was focused on my work, you know. I had to had to do the grind, had to had to do all that. Um and I never really met people because once you're done with school, meeting people in real life is so flippin' hard, it's just not okay. Um and yeah, it wasn't until I started going out to just my local communities and like what is it, what is it that I enjoy doing? And once I was able to answer that question, I mean there there was a time in there where I couldn't even answer that question. But we're not gonna we're not gonna get into that uh, discussion. <laughs> um, but uh, what was I saying? What was I talking about? Uh, so once I I knew what I enjoyed doing, I would try and find the communities that were doing that, and I would just go out and and do what I enjoyed, and that's how I started meeting new people, and that's how I started, you know, finding my. Um, finding my my gaming groups, uh, Mr. Awesome. Okay, uh, I'll be back. I hope. Well, Mr. Awesome, I hope we get to see you as well. Um, if we don't, thank you so much for stopping in, and we'll uh, we'll see you. Catch you later, man. Or, you know, I I assume man from from the name, but I'm not one to uh, to assign anything. So I shall just say, catch you later. Okay. That's a good chunk of the armor. I think that the boots are going to be the same color as the armor. That makes sense. This is a fashionable empress. She would have a matching set of armor, gauntlets, and boots. So let's give it to her. You know what I also, I, I very much look forward to the day when I get to ask people more, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Because <laughs> right now, I, it, I don't know, it, it's, it seems almost rude to be like, hey, what are you up to this weekend? And come on, we're all, we're all up to the same thing still. Um... So, but I, you know, I am genuinely curious. Uh, does anyone have any any fun plans? Anyone up to anything? Um, you know, we started uh, started this painting party as a as a way to hang out with people and painting in place, one hundred percent. I mean, it's in the name, painting in place. When we had to shelter in place, I was like, well, I'm gonna figure out a way to to hang out with folks. So I, I genuinely want to know what's going on with everyone. Uh, 
Uh, look at that. She is looking regal. And this is nice in that she uh, is not going to blend in. She's actually going to stand out quite nicely. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Today's uh, camera shake is brought to you by my upstairs neighbors. <laughs> All right, remembering to hydrate because my goodness. There we go. The AP channel is my primary plan for a typical weekend. Might get back to painting a mini again. I did the robe of the wizard and I'm looking forward to getting more done. Fun. Fun. Um, and Lazy Gothy, um, Eric, right? I, I'm trying to be better at assigning or, or using everyone's actual names tied to their, um, their account. Um, I just want to make sure it's, yep, Eric, cool, got it. Um, if, uh, one thing I, that I think we're, we're trying to do a little bit more is have more hangout spaces um like in, in our discord primarily um so i know you are starting up your your painting and you know um if you uh leech dylan hello how's it my gosh how, it's been a while since i've seen you how's it going yeah dilzo it's been holy crap it's been forever how have you been i was actually j okay seriously guys You okay? Okay, we're gonna... That was... It really is. And I was noticing that last night, too, that... Because after, after the gauntlet last night, I was beat. Like, I... Just passed out. We, uh, we raised a, uh... Or we raided another channel, and then... Um, I, I, I just fell asleep. But as I was falling asleep... It was just happening upstairs, and I had to be like, oh my gosh, just please stop. I want to reiterate, I love my upstairs neighbors. They're great. They're 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 lovely people. This is not me this is not me hating on them. This is more of just like a remark of my gosh, what's going on? <laughs> anyway, uh, things we were talking about. Uh Eric, I'm I'm hoping to start more of like a, a, a hangout video channel in the um well, video and audio, a, a voice channel in Discord. Um, and so if you find yourself painting and want to, uh, you know, essentially kind of do one of these where, you know, we could, we could, pay, we could paint together. Um, let me know. I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to, to start something like that up. Um, but also, please, yes, do share the pictures. I... I definitely want to see what people are working on. I want to see how things turn out. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, Dilzo, good. How are you? have been having to deal with some stuff. Well, I, um, I, I hope that whatever you've been having to deal with has been... Uh, you, you've been able to handle. Um, so, know that. I've been good. Things here at AP have um, have kind of grown significantly. We uh, we've officially taken all of our content and moved it here over to Twitch, or at least all of our live content. We are running the massive show on Fridays now called the Gauntlet, which is just so much fun, and it's it's basically D and D but with audience participation, um, and it's all combat. It's all fighting. It's a bunch of players who are trying to defeat every single creature in the mon monster manual. Um, although, you know, let, let's be honest, that's how, that's how AP is doing. You asked how I've been. Um, I've been good. I have been, you know, I think, you know, if I'm being, if I'm being honest, um, I had a little bit of a rough patch there last week, and that's fine. I, I am well now. Um, and I, I was well then. It was just that, you know, I had to... Life, life is still kind of crazy these days, and every so often we have moments where 
we gotta we gotta focus on ourselves and i've been focusing on a lot of other things rather than myself and well it just kind of caught up to me um but so yeah i am i am happy i am healthy i am enjoying I, I, I know I, I say this every so often, but I'm going to say it again. I truly am enjoying this community that we're, we're building here. Um, and, yeah. All right. I believe it's time now to move on to this, uh, this draping that she has. Um, you got to take care of yourself, Scott, so you can keep leading the pack to greatness. <laughs> Thank you, Krom. Oh, thank you, Josh. Um, yeah, it's it's true. You got to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. Um, and Eric, that'd be cool. I'll have to give it a try. Yeah, no, I'd I'd love to to try and set something like that up. And Bladro, thank you. Yeah, the Gauntlet is really a lot of fun. I'm I've, I've been enjoying uh, running it, and I know my players have been enjoying being in it. And I I certainly hope that you all are enjoying it uh, just as much as we are. So for her cape cloak. Whatever you want to call it, it's a cape, because technically it doesn't have a hood. I'm not making it a cloak. Um, we're going to use... We're going to use red, and to be quite frank, we're going to use the same red that we used here, which might look a little weird. Nope, we're going to use a darker red. <laughs> I, had, I had made up my mind, and then I changed it immediately. Uh, we're going to use this dragon red. So beforehand, on the we used heraldic red for the the throne and so for her cape we're going to use this um dragon red it's going to be deeper it's going to be richer we use this on the mouth of the shadow dragon which i think turned out pretty great um so let's see what this looks like i think it'll be cool so actually here's something i want to talk about a little bit uh you know i had that moment where i was asked like how are you? And you may have seen, saw that I, I actively had to take a pause and think to myself, how am I? And this was something I was taught a while back that we have this automatic response. People are like, how are you? Good, how are you? We use it as a greeting. We don't actually ask people how they are and expect to get a result. Um, so I try and actively take stock whenever someone asks me how I am. What were the rules that I was taught? Because the, the, I, I learned this in an acting school, and so of course they wanted to assign rules to it and make it you know, very official and stuff like that. I'm taking her off here really quick um, to make sure that as I paint this... Um, cloak i'm gonna be able to get all of the edges of of it so yeah that's why i'm doing that anyway so the the rules were if you were ever asked like at the end of every class um you had to go around and you had to say one word describing how you were feeling and you could not say good fine okay like you, you couldn't say any of those dismissive descriptions um and that's been really helpful for me as, as a person um it, it was helpful as an actor sure but you know what actually i, I shouldn't i shouldn't dismiss it like that you know we're people working as an as actors and, and it really it's you're you're doing a study to be a a fully fledged human being. You're you're studying people, so I'm I'm just gonna remove that out of it entirely. Um, it helped me as a person to be able to take stock whenever someone asked me how I was, and to give an honest response. The other thing that it helped me out with a lot was my honesty. I. Uh, was not the most honest person for the longest time. And I'm not saying that I, like, lied and steal and... or stole... <laughs> stealed. 
lied and stole and all that stuff. Like, I, I still consider myself being a good person. Um, but I would just, I would just lie. You know, people are like, hey, what, uh, what'd you do this weekend? And I'd lie about it. It, it was weird. Um, so that helped me fix that problem, too. Anyway, the point being is if uh, someone asks you how you are, feel that that urge to uh, feel that gut response to say, good, how are you? And then use that urge as a, a trigger for you to actually take a second and figure out, how am I? And then give that honest response. And see what that happens when you give that honest response. People will... People will surprise you. They'll open up to you. They'll start sharing more about their lives. Brioni, it's uh, diff uh, difficult when people ask you how you're doing because often it is just a greeting. I have chronic illnesses, so I'm never doing well, but I will answer good most of the time because it's either that or a 30-minute update. I, yeah, um, well, well, first off, Grioni, um, thank you so much for, for sharing, and, um, you know, I, I hope that you are well. Um, I've had, I, I've been fortunate enough in my life to, to be a fairly healthy person, um, but I've lived with people suffering from chronic illnesses, and I understand how that can, I can empathize. I, I, I don't understand because I haven't had it, but I can empathize. Um, and yeah, like, sometimes if people ask you how you're doing, and, and, just like, I, I don't want to take the time to actively describe how it is. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to say, hey, you know, even if you've got chronic illness, take the time and try, try and try and answer honestly. No, I'm, I'm not going to push that because... Different people have different levels of privacy in their life, and that's fine. Um, and Eric, I have coworkers where with some good is better uh, for my style, but other coworkers, I can feel like there's a better connection to reveal a bit more about what's actually going on. I like that. I like that. Yeah, and you know, the other thing is, it, it, it this isn't a a do this with everyone statement. Um, it's not as though I, you know, if I meet someone for the first time, like, hey, how are you doing? Like, man, let me tell you. No, I, I, I definitely do take it into take into consideration the circumstances. Um, like one thing that I'll actively do is. Even just in the, the checkout line at the grocery store, which, man, remember those days <laughs> where, you, where you could see people's faces? Um, anyway, at the, the checkout line in the grocery store, you know, I come up and I do the standard, hello, how are you? And they're like, good, how are you? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm well, thank you. Today's going fairly well, just getting all this done. And then they'll, um, they'll usually... You know, either either stop talking, or um, go on to like the standard talking but not actually saying anything that a lot of us do. I'm not saying that you know it's something that just re retail workers do, but a lot of us do. But I'll ask a second time. Then I'll take a pause and say, "So how how are you today?" And just asking that second time, people will open up to you. I did not mean to get super like heavy on this. It was, it was just something that I was like, hey, here, let's talk about this really quick. Uh, ben, 
Exactly. There's a comfort level that is necessary for that sort of vulnerability. It's absolutely true. It is absolutely true. God, I could not imagine, you know, being open and vulnerable to every single person I ever meet. But, you know, there, there are some people who are comfortable with that. And that's fine. Crom the Crusher. This got deep, but I'm enjoying hearing my philosophy on life. Well, thank you, Crom. This is what I'd be doing anyway. I'd, I'd be here. If I didn't have you all here, I'd just be painting and talking out loud about about my beliefs. <laughs> no, but here's here's the thing. Like I I absolutely um th this place is always a place to hang out. This is a place to chill. Um I just happen to be the one with a microphone and I'm never going to I'm never going to use this as a way to preach anything. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm just going to talk. <laughs> it's good to talk about mental health every once in a while. It's an important topic that doesn't get as much attention as it needs to. Zagmeister, absolutely. Um, I, I think that's actually a, a major issue that we have right now, is that we don't give enough attention to mental health issues um, at, at all. And, you know, we, uh, we treat people with mental illnesses uh, like criminals in many cases. <laughs> Do you guys like how I was like, tr I was trying to steer that out of the, the deep conversation going, hey, let's just, we'll, we'll just go back to painting and suddenly like, nope, here we go. Let's open this can of worms. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. However, uh, one thing I, I do want to take, um, I, I do want to take this time to say, um, you know, we will continue to n not have um, this. We're not. We're not. We don't. We are not going to get political here on AP. Um, you know, this this isn't the place for it. We can ride that fine line of like talking about some things, but I I, I don't want to see. I don't want to see any like debates here. Any of you ever take debate class? Or like the debate team after school? That, that was never something offered at my school and I'm always curious because a lot of people talk about it like, oh, I was on the debate team. Like, what? What was that like? Did you just sit in a room and argue? <laughs> Closest thing we had, we had a mock trial, which, uh, you know, those are the people who wanted to be lawyers when they grew up. Apparently, I was I was pretty good at that. But you'll note, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> um, Zagmeister, and always good to have a safe space to hang out. Absolutely. It, it is always good to have a safe space to hang out. Um... I always want everyone to feel safe while, while they're here. Um, and you know, you all here at the AP community have done an amazing job of cultivating that yourselves. Um, so I, I just want to give a big shout out to all of you for, for doing that. Like, thank you. Good on, good on you all. Uh, no need to steer anything anywhere. Uh, we love you. <laughs> also, Scott, you're not coming off as preach. Well, thank you. I'm, uh, took a college speech class and had to debate, um, had a debate thing in the eighth grade. The teacher told each side what to argue about. Told each side what to argue. Man, so you had potentially had to debate something that you didn't believe in. Um, we had debate team. Formal debates had to be structured and follow an argument versus rebuttal format. Ah, that would be nice. Here's my argument. 
time for a rebuttal. And then do you do you have uh, do you have a counter rebuttal? All right. Thank you for your time. Moving on. Um, Crom loves this community. Ah, uh, yes, Crom. We and this community loves you. This community loves to see you crush. Yes, of course, since I went to an all-boys high school, the meetings could often devolve into kids yelling at each other. Oh, no. <laughs> and Eric, yes, it was annoying. It was structured. Structured. And wow. Like, I, I could... I, 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 I get it. Like, here, here's the thing, and you have to argue this side. And I could see where that would, like, hey, cool. Like now, I have to do research. I have to, I have to research the side that I disagree with, which is going to force you to get as much information as you possibly can, and ultimately, it's going to lead to you having a, a stronger uh, case for the thing that you do believe in. Um. The example that I use for this, um, a good friend of mine in high school told me about this amazing book series that I absolutely had to read. It was called Twilight. Um, and listen, I'm not going to knock you if you like Twilight, because um, again, I'm not going to tear you down. There's, if, if you like it, you like it, and I... I Appreciate that and respect that. Where did I put the dragon? There's the dragon red. Um, and I read the first book and I went, okay. I got, I, okay. There's a part that I really like in this book. But I read the first one and because I am who I am, I was like, well, I, I have to read all of that now because I started something. I'm going to finish it. Um, and so I would, I would debate people in college who were like, Twilight's the greatest movie ever made and um this this is why twilight is the greatest love story and i said i i disagree they said, well you just haven't read the books and i was able to say no i have i've read all of them now let me tell you why i disagree so i mean knowledge is power and if you're going to argue something have knowledge on both sides makes you that much more powerful. Um, Dave, I mean, the structure is nice if moderated well. When people say debate me online, what they tend to mean is let me get my talking points out then ignore what you have to say and descend into a shouting match. Absolutely. I, uh, anytime people are like, yeah, d debate me online. No, I, I don't do that. I will never debate people online. If you want to have a discussion with me about anything, um, we're going to do so in a, in a live setting. Um, obviously, you know, current uh, setting excluded. Um, hey, H, H4W14, and that looks to be... Um, was that Russian? Well, hello and welcome. Hope that, uh, hope that you're enjoying this. I have no idea what that said, but translates to, Hi, dude. Oh, cool. Hi, dude. Hi, back. Welcome. Uh, welcome to uh, to our community. Welcome to the tavern. Hope that you are having a wonderful day. Grab yourself a chair. Nestle on up to the bar. Well, that's kind of fun to say. Um, I like that. Maybe that maybe that'll be like our catch thing for Twitch because you gotta have like a twi a, a catch and a hook. Um, Yeah, like, so, I guess what I was saying was, I'll talk about things in a forum like this, because here we can talk, but I won't debate things unless we are on the phone or I'm sitting across from the table from you. Um, because then, I mean, oh, online, it is so easy for people to forget that they're talking to another human. 
Um, and that's when things become rude. Okay, I have two things that I almost entirely forgot about. Uh, her crown was actually the one that I forgot about, and she's got this... <laughs> Let's talk painting for a second. <laughs> uh, we've got this crown here that she, uh, she's she got, and then we've also got this, uh, this choker, which at first I thought, yeah, that could be part of her armor, and it could be, but it could also be something... Um, it could be an adornment. Uh, I have a good voice. I do not know English well, but I understand the point. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it. See, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sink into that and like really sinking into my voice. No, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I, I did see a comment last night uh, on the gauntlet that kind of made me blush. And um, to my fellow pack mates, I don't know if I told you about this. Uh, someone, someone commented uh, something along the lines of, why does the GM have such a sex, such a sexy voice? <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I, I don't know how to respond to to that. <laughs> um, it's the microphone. It's it's the microphone. I've got a really good microphone. Um, that that's all it is. <laughs> um, all right. Anyway, I've got some touch ups to do on the armor, but you know we've got something to. We've got something to think about for the neck. We've got, uh, is that going to be part of the armor? Is that going to be something, maybe we could make that golden um, and, and give her, or silver, uh, drow like their silver, um, silver jewelry. Or, yeah, we've got options, we've got so many options. Oh, don't be so modest. We all know you have. Uh, no, I'm. I, I will admit to being that guy who's never. I've, I've never been good at taking compliments. Um, I'll just turn as many shades of red as we're going to need to highlight this cloak, um, and just change the subject. So, you know, with that being said, um, flumps, man, they're, they're crazy. Who, who would have thought that they could deal that much damage? Oh shoot. That was like from two episodes ago though. They didn't deal any damage last time because you all rocked it once you got to level two. I mean, you rocked it before, but level two, boy, that was a, that was a big jump. Yeah. You destroyed those flumps last night. They didn't even get a chance to poison you. Although on the subject of poison, those flying snakes, um, Krom, you got eaten alive by their poison. I was glad they didn't get that hour-long stench attack to, out to stick. Yeah, that... Fess really got unlucky um, with that. And, you know, in a normal game... An hour-long disadvantage on everything. Oh, that's... Oh, well, it's it's an hour. That's that's not too bad. Uh, we'll just take a short rest and it'll be gone. But in the gauntlet, where you're going from fight to fight to fight, that's not good. Um... <laughs> Great describe. Thank you. I'm I'm very adept at changing the subject. I am I am quite good. <laughs> Oof, I can already see some of the bristles of my brush are maybe needing to be re uh, reconditioned. But that's okay, it's actually gotten really far. Thank you. 
I'm uh, not looking at the chat too much right now. The These hands are needing some attention. There we go. Uh, oh, wow, a lot happened. All that poison damage has me... Whoa, whoa, no, I was reading that. Hold on, come back, come back. Guys, slow down. Uh, all that poison damage has me second-guessing my choice to take Zealot over Bear Totem. Ah. I mean, you haven't chosen yet. There's there's always time. Do a lot of changing the subject, but I'm a bit too non-subtle. <laughs> started... Hey, uh, HFW14 started playing recently. Before that, I only played in full text RP. That's awesome. What, um... What, what are you playing? What, um... What class, race, all those all those questions that we love to ask when we see someone who uh, has just started recently. And also, how are you enjoying it? All right, that might have been a little bit too much in the face. Um... Each time there's a chaos wheel spin, my puppies need to go outside so you miss them. Oh no! Oh, don't don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna see more of those chaos wheel spins. Um, honestly, I'm sad that they cost as much as they do. Um, even though you know I I control how much they cost, um, but I know if if I made them any cheaper, it's all we'd see all the time. Um, we'll see some more. Have some full text RP going on in our Discord server if that's your cup of tea. It's true. We actually uh, we do ha now have a um, um, a theater of the mind section in our uh, in the Discord server for AP. Um, and yeah, you are welcome to go hang out there, make yourself a character, have a good time. Um, just, you know, be sure to stick with our code of conduct. Um, and actually, one thing that I, I did implement uh, for our server is... The, the one thing is we there is no combat in our roleplay server. Because there's no fighting in the tavern, all right? You, if you want to brawl, you take that outside. <laughs> when changing the subject, uh, just shout out. Say loudly when making an actual... I love it. You play as an elven warlock. I like it. Uh, warlocks are so much fun. I know Krom here. Uh, yep, there you go. Krom's already got me. Warlocks are fun as long as you don't displease your patron. Let me tell you about the story about how I have 100% uh, told my patron to go bugger off <laughs> with my warlock. Uh, Eric, I felt bad for you when all those surges and things all happened at once by multiple people that one time last night. Yeah, no, that was a lot of stuff happened. It was it was great. Uh, must be a non D and D tavern if there's no brawling. Yeah, no, it's uh, <laughs> you can brawl just outside. That's that's the rule. <laughs> Ooh, that's tricky, and I'm definitely gonna need to clean that up. Although not as much as I was anticipating there. Um, right, hold on, we're gonna get here. Also, one thing that I really need to do, I need to practice not saying um as much. Um, yeah, Krom is in uh, another game. He has, uh, he goes by the name of Right Hand Raven which some of you may remember from our very first episode of The Gauntlet. Um, and has kind of started a little cult following in that game, which I know a, a few of you here are from as well. And please know, when I, when I say cult following, I, I do not mean anything negative by that. Uh, here we go, cleaning up the boot. So... Where was I going with that? Yeah, so in his server, he's got full uh, full combat going on. And in fact, they even have tournaments. You have a patron. This is an ancient deity that was forgotten due to the war of thousands of years. I like it. Oh, I like it a lot. Um, so let me let me tell you a, a little bit about my my 
warlock who is fed up with his patron. <laughs> um, I need to preface this. Well, no, I don't need to preface this too much. So I made a warlock with a sailor background because, uh, as I've talked about before, I grew up on the ocean and I, I wanted to have a sailor ba background. This was the first character, actually, it, ever, really, that I got to play and not be the DM. So I was so excited. So yeah. Warlock background, went Hexblade, his name is Vex, <laughs> and as I say these things, it's just, it, it sounds more and more like I, yeah. I made this character before I knew that D&D &D on Twitch was a thing. I just want to make that very clear. <laughs> um, so it, it was not influenced by any popular shows or anything like that. I, it's just what I made. <laughs> I know, I should, I should sue Travis. Uh, technically, he, wait, what, how, what was the timeline on this? He technically would have made his character before me because they made their characters six weeks before the show aired. However, um, you know, I, I didn't know about the character until after it happened. Now, I'm, I'm a half-elf, so I'm not a half-orc. I got that going for me. <laughs> um, so, anyway. Sailor, warlock, has a sword that he summons, all that cool stuff. And uh, my, my patron was Dendar, the Night Serpent. And I had this cool ability that, as people slept, I could give them nightmares. Um, and I had to do that to continue to appease my patron. Um, and... Um, eventually we finished the, the Dendar plot and I ended up gaining a new patron. Um, and it was, I, I then became the, the, the warlock to Vecna and then Vecna sent this to, uh, sent us to a different plane of existence to, um, uh, to know, do something. And it, it was around this time that the... The, the plot of our game started getting a little, like, haywirey, and the structure started getting a little strange, um, and <laughs> my character just kind of got fed up with the whole, go do this, go do this, and he called his patron out and basically, like, listen, I'll, uh... I'll do this if you'll actually tell me what it is you want me to do, because, you know, Vecna, they're all secretive and whatnot. I said, you, you keep saying go do this, but you won't tell me what the this is. I'll do it, but only if you tell me what it is. And if you're not ready to tell me what it is, don't expect me to do anything for you. And I, I just I mouthed off to my patron. He's, he's still alive. But... We'll see how long that lasts. Um, I made a drow warlock as a character for your game, the out of uh, your wife's game for Out of the Abyss. Nice. Um, yep, Crom plays a warlock sorcerer in our non gauntlet game. Character Raven Queen patron. Yep. Oh, Dendar is such a jerk. So much fun, though. Um, oh, yeah, no, if you if you are a warlock and you actively choose not to get Eldritch Blast, you have a very interesting bit going on. All right, so at this point, um, I mean, we're coming up to the two-hour mark. Wow, we've been painting for two hours. And we've got... The uh, most of the the base colors down. We've got some touch ups to do, but we're already looking pretty good. I like the how these colors are turning out. 
Um, and actually, before before I, I move on to talking about this, I just want to say I think Warlocks are such a great class because they come with built-in um, uh, character backstory. You know, it. I am a big fan of roleplay in my games. Although the Gauntlet may not look, or it, it, the Gauntlet, the Gauntlet may not be a good example because it's one hundred percent combat. I. Uh, I run my games from a storytelling perspective. I use Dungeons & Dragons to tell captivating stories that my players um, propel forward. So um, that's what D&D is for me. And Warlocks are great in that they can force people who are not necessarily comfortable with roleplay it's a it's that good first step of well I, I want to role play but I don't know what I should do it's like well hey be a warlock because immediately there's stuff that your DM can use to integrate into the story and that's what I'm gonna say about that um, you found a chest whose contents are unknown to anyone the goddess ordered the paladin to kill anyone who tries to open it freaking paladins man no one can find out what is in it I can't describe it in detail but it's cool that's that's pretty epic um <laughs> oh man see now i want to know what's in it i want to know what's in that chest are there any rogues in your party anyone who's going to defy the paladin open up the chest while they sleep we had a a chest incident in our campaign where uh our players had found a chest on a on a ghost ship and decided to open it. And they opened it without checking for traps first. And there was a rather interesting creation of my own design in there that uh, involved alchemist fire. And basically it set their ship on fire. And um, it almost sank. Some good stuff there. It was not very cash money, the goddess. Enjoy if we can talk our way out of encounters, but crushing works too. It's true, it's true. Uh, also totally agree with the built-in role playability. Uh, Warlocks is one of the most, it's one of the most rewarding things. Absolutely. <laughs> what's in, hashtag what's in the chest. Ben, always check for traps. Absolutely. It's true. The, the ship did not sink, but it is taking a month of in-game time to repair. So they're stranded. Uh, luckily, they're stranded on a pretty good uh, set of islands. They're essentially in D&D uh, &D Vegas right now. Still, though. All right. Doing some touch-up on the skin here. I need to, yep, there's a little bit on the face that I gotta do some touch-ups on. And now that I did the touch-up on the face, there's now some touch-ups on the hair that I'm gonna have to do. This is the this is the constant dance back and forth. Touch up the face, touch up the hair, touch up the face, touch up the hair. Um always check for, yeah. It's like telling people not to push the red button. Yeah, they're gonna do it. I put that chest on the the boat knowing that it would go off. I, I knew it. <laughs> it's not that I railroaded my players into forcing the chest to go off. No, I knew that if it was there, I, I knew what was going to happen. Because I've played with these players for over three years now. Although, man, it's been so long since our last game. Oh, boy. It... No, I said it, but it is. It's a never-ending dance. All right, that's cleaned up. 
That's cleaned up. I'm gonna have to clean up the hair. That's cleaned up. Good, we're good. My fingers are starting to lock up. Oh, which means I need water. I'm dehydrated. That's what that problem is. <laughs> HFW, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you, uh, you dropped in, and I am so happy that you are having what sounds to be an incredible story happening with your first game. Welcome, welcome to a lifelong obsession. Where we are happy to have you as uh, have you as a part of it. All right, time to touch up the hair. I think, unless I royally screw up here, we're gonna get clo We're getting pretty close. There's that, there's that, there's that. That's good. Don't need to do any touch-up on the hair there. Or the face. I, I did good. Good job, Scott. Pat on the back. And let's do... Paladin defeated God. Dang. Uh, a paladin who defeated God. That's... That's... <laughs> yeah, okay, don't, don't mess with them. Don't mess with that paladin. I like that idea for a paladin. Like they, they weren't given their power by a deity, they took it. Right, let's go ahead and just get back here. We're never really gonna see this, but I'm gonna get it anyway. All right, there's that. And I believe, I believe in you, I believe, I believe in Steve. Well, proof right there that I'm a Jacksepticeye fan. <laughs> Alright, and the pants are good. Alright, just a little bit on the knee there. And ladies and gentlemen, it's our main colors done. I, obviously, I have not done... Um, <laughs> Chrome, I looked down for, I mean, let's be honest, for a little while. Um, oh, hey, yeah, thank you for the Skull Reaper 457. Thank you so much for, for the follow. That's great. Um, um. Auto mod. Auto mod, what are you trying to do? These were strip cards. Um I I don't see anything wrong with that. Um Yeah, because I mean we're gonna need to talk about stuff like stripping paint as well, so yeah, we can use the word strip. <laughs> um Krom, th thank you for the two hundred bits Krom. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, the, uh, the Empress is looking pretty darn good. Um. So, I haven't done the crown yet. K 
because I'm not sold on what the crown is going to be. Uh, but we've still got some work to do on there. But that's that's looking pretty solid. So, I mean, and we've already been painting now for a little over two hours. So I think we're going to call it there. So we've got our base layers down, except for the crown. Uh, Touch-ups are finished. So next up, we're going to be able to move on to washes. Man, now that we're doing this in... Um, uh, now that we're doing this in two hour increments, we're able to get so much more done so much faster. Uh, where's my little thing here? So let's go ahead and bring this back over here. There we go. Let's move these away. Um, uh, incorporating the green from the throne gem. That is a distinct possibility. Um, I like the idea of maybe the, the crown having some silver on the sides, but the very center there being the same green from the gem. That's... Uh, Dave, that's a really good idea. I like that. Um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to write that down. So, it looks so much smaller on this screen. So yeah, next week, well no, not next week, on Monday, we will be continuing on our work with that. So be sure to, uh, it's sl <laughs> silver and green, Slytherin colors. Yep, no, and I'm not a Slytherin at heart. Uh, well, even just on paper, yeah, I'm a Slytherin. We're not all evil, we're just ambitious. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so we're going to be continuing on Monday. Before we get going, I just want to thank you all so much for joining. Uh, this is always so much fun. For those of you who are new, we love having you. If you would like to join us, uh, we typically do a post-show hangout in our Discord. There is a little widget below the screen. You can go and join there. Also, I want to give a big shout out to all of our patrons. Uh, thank you so much for your patronage. It is really helping us to grow. If you are interested in be becoming a patron, we actually just revamped our entire patron page. There's new, um, new rewards that you can get, including... Um, Gosh, what do we have? My voice is starting to go. I've been, oh my gosh, I'm feeling that. <clears throat> gosh, right as I'm trying to wrap up, everyone. Um, everything ranging from uh, just a uh, monthly newsletter to downloadable content like um, homebrew content that I make or also the maps that we're using in the gauntlet. You can download those. We're going to be releasing them there. Uh, that's all that I'm going to say about that. I, I, I never like to push the Patreon because I feel weird doing that, but you, we've got that. Oh yeah, and there's also going to be uh, character backstories. So you're going to get in-depth uh, character history about all of the fighters in the gauntlet. Um, also, if you're new here and you haven't already followed our page or followed our channel, please hit that follow button. It means the world to us, and we would love to have you continue to be a part of our community here at the Advent Adventurers Pack. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I will be in the uh, Discord post-show hangout, and otherwise, I will see you on Monday. Bye, all.